In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an illustrated galaxy scene. So if you want to learn how, keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Um, so to begin this illustrated scene, I'm going to start by sketching out a little mountain silhouette. And I'm going to do this about one third of the way down my paper. I'm using one of the Magnani, Magnani, I think, um, round watercolor blocks. I'm gonna list all of the supplies below as always, so you can check these out. So now I'm just gonna fill the top portion of the paper with clean water. And I'm gonna make sure that the paper is nice and damp. So I don't want any puddles of water. I just want the surface to be nice and shiny. So it needs to have that sheen. And I'm gonna bring it down close to the pencil lines, but I'm not gonna worry about following them exactly. Now I'm going to take my Princeton round number 14 brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of this violet color and I'll just start placing that on the wet paper just wherever I want to. And then I'm gonna take lamp black and I'm going to add that along the upper top edge and bring that into the purple color as well. When you're doing this, try to think about where you want some darker areas and some lighter areas to be. So for instance, in the darker areas, I'm going to have more of that lamp black, more concentrated color. And in some of the lighter areas, I'm going to have that purple and also permanent rose, which I've added here. So just keep on adding your colors, try to make a good balance of colors. So if I have a little bit of black on one edge, I'm going to kind of want to add a little bit more to the other edge just to balance it out a little bit. And using that brush now, I'm able to go in tighter to those pencil lines and just bring the paint as close to them as possible. I am also using a dry brush throughout this just to create lighter, softer areas and to lift off some of those puddles of paint that I don't want. You really don't want puddles of paint because you're gonna get that kind of cauliflower effect when it dries because it's gonna dry slower than the previous layers. So you can just fix that by grabbing a dry brush and just lifting off as I'm doing here. And just keep playing with it until you're happy with how it looks. When that layer is totally dry, you're gonna notice that it is a lot lighter than it was initially when you laid the paint down. That's just how watercolor works. It's not a big deal. That's why we're gonna go in now with a second layer. And this layer is just gonna be used to darken up the existing layer beneath it. And we're also going to create a nice combination of colors once again. So using those exact same techniques, we're just gonna do this once again and remember to sop up any puddles using a dry brush if you do want more intensity from your paint just remember not to mix the paint with as much water as you normally would because you want to keep that pigmentation and if the paper is already wet as you can see here it's already wet due to the colors that i've already placed on there you don't want to be adding more and more um, blobs of wet paint so try to keep those drier the wetter your painter gets hopefully that makes sense and you also don't have to use these colors you can use dark reds and oranges and yellows for like a sunset tone or you can use blues and yellows and oranges that would look really pretty too I just wanted more of a nighttime pretty purpley pink sky so I went with these colors plus there are some of my brighter colors that I do have I'm tipping my paper now just to kind of let those paint colors flow into each other a little better and I'm taking a smaller dry brush and I'm just lifting off some areas that I want to be a little bit lighter just to add those kind of splashes of light and I've also used that same brush to sop up some of the drips and the puddles that were forming around the mountains from tipping the paper So when that's totally dry, I'm gonna take my Tombow drawing pen here. This is one of the Tombow brush pens actually. Um, I didn't like this for this paper because I did find it was a little bit, um, it didn't 
work smoothly on this cold pressed paper. So I would recommend something that will go on a little bit more smoothly. Uh, the Sakura Pigma Micron pens, which I will be switching to in a minute. They're really good for this kind of paper. But I've just outlined the whole top area of those mountains to separate them from the colored background. And now using that number five um, Pigma Micron pen, I'm going to do the mountains in sort of an illustrative style here. I've seen this done a lot in graphic design work. So I'm just going to kind of mimic that on my painting. I'm basically just creating these really rough jagged shapes wherever I want there to be a darkened area. And then I'm filling that shape in just with a little bit of line detail or cross hatching. You'll notice a lot of the darker areas come directly off of the tips of some of these mountains that just adds to the whole mountain-esque um, texture and feel. So just imagine where you think some of the darker areas would be visible on your mountains and then create smaller little um, jagged shapes wherever you think there might be a little bit of dimension. Now I'll just create a ground line here. This is going to help split up some of the different depths that we're going to be creating with trees. So to create a tree, I'm just taking one of my fine liner brushes here and a highly pigmented mix of lamp black. And I'm just going to start by drawing a vertical line wherever I want to place the tree. And from the top of the tree, I'm going to start pulling out little branches, just very um, randomly and just not paying too much attention to detail here. I'm just going to use the tip of the brush and sort of swish the paint around and create these little lines and different shapes of the branches. I'm doing this one a lot slower just so you can see the movement that I create with the brush and I just kind of go back and forth from one side to the other, just sort of very jaggedly moving my brush along and creating those branches. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here now um, to finish off the rest of this piece. So the trees that are more in the background, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller and they're going to be positioned a little bit higher on the page than the ones that are closer to us. It's just a little lesson in perspective. <laughs> and of course, the ones that are closer to us, they're going to be bigger and they're going to be further down the page. So I'm just going to place those wherever I feel like the piece needs them. You don't have to copy my painting exactly. You can place your trees wherever you want to. Just remember to alternate from big ones to little ones to ones in the far distance to ones up close and it should work out for you. I'm going to plop some teeny tiny little guys in the very back here just to again add to that depth. So once that's totally done, we can move back onto the sky and I'm going to create some shooting stars first. I'm just using a Jelly Roll white ink pen here. Again, all supplies are below um, and I'm just creating a little dot and then kind of flinging the, um, the tip of my pen outwards just to create that little trail. And instead of splattering this piece, I wanted to do all of the little stars by hand just so I could create some more definitive clusters of stars. 
So I'm keeping some areas really tight together uh, with all of the little dots that I'm creating and other areas they're going to be a lot more separated. And I'm just going to continue making little dots all over the painting. If you screw up like I just did, you can make that into a shooting star. It doesn't really matter. And I'm using my Posca white paint pen here just to create some larger stars. So that's really all there is to it. I hope that you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Be sure you're subscribed to my channel. I'm gonna try to be putting out videos every Tuesday and Friday from now on. So I really hope I see you in the next one.